Hey everybody, Lord Garmin on here, back with uh, the second episode of my new podcast series. Uh, well, I guess I'll just jump right in. So today we're we're about to begin filming on the final scenes, or not the final scenes in the show, the uh, final scenes we're going to be filming, the final battle. It takes place in Langwood and Drago City, and we're finishing setting up. Now, typically... I don't actually help in the actual process of sending up. I'm just kind of sitting back and watching the crew do their stuff, you know. Oh, so it's uh, it's been like a, almost a month since I've recorded another one of these. I've been pretty busy, but uh, happy New Year's if it's been, and happy uh, Lunar New Year's as well, because you know, Toast Book is coming out later again this year. But that is okay. The story honestly does not revolve around New Year's in the slightest, so it doesn't really matter as long as the content is getting across. Uh, this is a pretty good set. I've been asked to uh, describe it to you, so I guess I shall. So, like I said, it's a city. We've got some, like, a little market in the corner. We've got, like, this... I don't know what it is. Like, a pond. An artificial pond. Kind of like a little park that they, like, we're going to fight in. I've gone over a lot of the choreography, a lot of the fighting for this already. So, we're really jumping. Just going to jump right in start filming. But for, before that, they need to film uh, Jay's parents arriving. They're... They're getting suited up right now. They've got like their jet packs and stuff, and they really went all out this year. They, I those a lot of these practical effects are actually practical effects. Like a lot of the stuff we're not adding in afterwards. Like they're actually lowering them down on strings, and like they've got like things exploding on their shoes to make it look like jet packs, and they're actually setting off the explosives here, and it, it's making a mess. We're having a good time with it, I think. I think it looks good. It looks a lot better than a lot of the more modern stuff, which is not real, not real in the slightest. So I, I do think there is a level of artistry to it this year, especially. Uh, what else? Well, I guess I can start by doing some more fan mail again today. So we have one here. This is from, well, name of the hell, I cannot actually tell you who it's from. But one of our fans writes and asks, A dear Lord Garmanon, after you're done filming this, what's next? Do you have another job? Are you going to be in another movie? Well, I don't actually know. Because filming for the final Toast the Book is going to start right up really soon. So I honestly don't think I'm going to audition for anything else in between. Here's another one. Dear Lord Garmadon, where did you get your start? Well, I, um, before I am here as I was, I actually, I went to college, uh, and I tried a lot of different things. Uh, for a while, I didn't really know what I wanted to do in my life, but eventually I realized that I really had a passion for acting, so I, I got into the acting, you know, I took all the classes, and I tried some basic auditions, but I really didn't get anywhere, until one day... The audition done, very nice. And they were like, this is the guy right here. You're going to be Lord Garmadon. And it's like, from then on, I've had a contract with like, these people. And it's been one hell of a ride, I'll have to say myself. I mean, hey, I'm not complaining. I enjoy this stuff. But man, I was not expecting this at all. This is, this is great. I never thought 15, 20 years ago that I would be in the place I am now. And I, I, I'm proud of myself. A, a lot of people I know are very happy with what we've done here and what I've done, and I'm glad I've been able to impact them in positive ways. Uh, next question. Um, now they ask, this is another person, what is your favorite color? This is a very basic question, but I'll try to answer it. A lot of people think Lord God Ron's favorite color would be like black or something, or red. It's actually not. My favorite color is purple. I think purple is an interesting character. I'm a very artistic person. Purple... There's so much to express with purple. Well, red is kind of gone and instant, and black and blue are kind of just gone and instant. Purple sticks in your head, and it really makes you think about what you're looking at. It actually gets you to like, hmm, what was that? That was something purple. And a lot of, a lot of other colors do not, in my opinion, catch you like purple does and make you think like, oh man, what was that I just saw? That was, that was purple, wow. A lot of other colors, they just kind of pass by. Um, now someone asks, what? Somebody asks, are the forearms real? I will confirm or deny nothing on the fact if my forearms are real or not. No, next question, please, next question. Have you ever tried being a model? 
No, I have never tried modeling. So I think the forearms could probably help with that, because I know a lot of people are into some strange stuff, so forearms might be in me somewhere. All right, next question. All right, so now they ask, how detailed are the sets? Well, I personally think that our sets are very detailed. Now, they might not have the best, like, high-tech Legos or the most expensive, but I, there is a lot of detail put behind them, and it takes a few hours to set some of these scenes up because there generally is a lot of detail behind some of the sets. Now, whether it be just the placement of buildings, a lot of little, 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 little details, just little things like little bottles placed here and there, another trash can just thrown in the mix, it helps. It makes it feel, because a real city doesn't look pretty. A real city isn't like a boatload of nice things all organized. A real city is just buildings on buildings of just shit all put together and with people crawling out of every spot of it. And now we can't obviously get that exact look. We can try to at least make something that, it's not supposed to look nice, but hey, at least you can tell you're in a city. There's like no room to breathe. There's and there's just enough room really just for us to do the fighting because that's what we mainly just need enough room and just a certain amount of people so there's enough you know, space because we got to swing our arms we, we do a lot of it's we have a lot of detailed stuff and like and the fighting as well is very detailed it's we're trying to get it a bit more realistic this year i know i, I don't think that took off because Honestly, the, this, the fighting in this doesn't is not very realistic. I have taken several martial arts classes in my life, and it, it's not the most realistic shit I've ever seen in my life. A lot of this is, is pure, pure, pure stage fighting, but there's not much more you can really do because, I mean, we're Legos, so I'm not really sure what else we can really do. Um... That's another question someone asks. Is the fighting real? No, no, it, it's not real. It isn't. It's fake. We're not actually killing people. We are actors, and they're actors and actresses. This is our jobs. We're not actually hurting each other. It's just pretend. Are the weapons real? Yes, some of them are a bit real to make them look more realistic. And I have had some actual training on how to do some of this stuff, make it look more realistic. Now, here's another question someone's been asking, and I've gotten a lot of fan mail on this. What about, what is Garbodon's power? Well, it's kind of like the elemental power of destruction. He kind of just has this like purple energy he used a lot in the first one. He doesn't doesn't nearly use it as much in this this new part because he's more of a good guy. But he kind of just asks, what is Garmadon's like power? And it it is really I do believe the elemental power of destruction, but he doesn't really use it in this one nearly as much as he did because Garmadon is now a, a good guy. He's not. He's not then an evil man trying to take over the universe anymore. He's just a dad trying to raise his son, and that's honestly about it. So that's why you see him using way more martial artsy stuff. I mean, not not a lot, but I specifically was hoping I would get a bit more of that. A lot of that went to Lloyd, so that was a bit disappointing for me. That's all right. Um, next question. So I've been getting this a lot. Do I know how this is going to end? I have not actually seen the script for the final test book yet, so I'm kind of don't really know what's going to happen. They laid down a few hints, and I've got a few ideas and speculations, but I'm just as in the dark as you guys are. They're trying to keep it a secret. I can guarantee you it will not come out in time for next year's year. They're not really doing that anymore. There's nowhere near enough time to get them finished like they used to because they're so different. And and now someone else asked me this. What is the purpose of my cameo in the second Toast in the Book? Well, it, there really is no purpose to that. I was wondering myself. There isn't a purpose to that. As soon as I show up and I say, I think it was like, come on, Lord, it's time for dinner. It's a joke. We cooked Kai and... No, uh, the coal, that was a joke, and now we're going to go eat, but then I'm evil in the next part, so I think it's really just a stupid, it's a joke, it really doesn't serve any purpose. I never put much thought to it afterwards, but I know a lot of you did, so thank you for your speculation. 
Uh, next question. Actually, I'm out of questions. Yes, um... Hmm... Well, I know a lot of people in the past have asked me about my personal life and, like, if I have family and stuff. Well, I mean, the character Garmadon, he has his son and he had a wife. In the Toast the Book universe, my wife died and we don't actually, it never says how, but... Uh, I'm in real life. It's, it's just me. I don't need. I don't need kids or family. I've. I've never really been a family person, honestly. I like portraying a family man, but in real life, I'm not a family man. I'm kind of just. I'm a, not necessarily a loner, but I don't really need somebody else to slow me down. I've never really wanted someone else. Really, I've. I mean, sure, I've liked somebody every now and then, but n never. Never enough to really want to settle down. I'm, I guess I just am too committed to what I do to really do that. Because I look at all these other celebrities who get married and in a week they're divorced. And it's just not worth it. In my opinion, it's just not worth it. It really isn't. And, I, and I've and i actually, I've been in a few relationships. And my typically my partners agree with me. They're like, I don't want to take this further. And I've never had a talk and end ship. Mm, sorry. I've never had a relationship and talk. I mean, in the past, yeah, whatever, but, like, I'm, my, my more recent ones, I mean, or a few years ago, that mostly well, I'll just put them aside, like, I don't want to take this further, and they've typically been like, yeah, me too, and we kind of just move on with life, and I, I appreciate that, because sometimes I just look at all these celebrities and how they just get married, and then within a week they're divorced, and it's like, what you've got, to, what are you doing, it's like, no, I don't know why celebrities do that, like get married or something. But I really don't understand. I think it's some publicity shit, but I really do not know. Oh, the set's almost finished. It looks like. Uh. Okay, so. Well, my. A topic of relationships. I remember the time I went on my first date. Oh, this is this is pretty funny. This is a good story of mine. So, I I'm a I had bought in all these these chocolates and these flowers, and the second I left the store, I got a message, and my well, I didn't actually get a message back then. You didn't have phones. I just something occurred to me like, what am I doing? And like, that was the day it kind of hit me, like, I don't really want to do this. And, like, I went on the date, and it was kind of boring. I mean, well, uh, I don't really want to talk about what happened. It was a weird time. We, uh, may I, I'll make a few suggestions for you. Mm. Just, just don't. Just, just don't. don't. You don't need, I mean, if you really want somebody, but, like, in my opinion... I don't think being in a relationship just for the sake of being in a relationship is really worth it. I don't see anything in that. Anything at all. Personally, I just... I think if you're good by yourself, then do you by yourself. And I don't mean, like, do you, like, you know, you know. I mean, like, just, just be yourself. You don't need somebody else there to, like... Unless you, like, get a, get a, get a pet or something. I don't know. I, I don't have any pets, I don't even really know. I have plants. I have a lot of plants, and they're like my children to me. I love plants. I don't really like gardening. I like house plants. Those big green ones. I, I've got a whole just collection of them. They're like my kids. But Lloyd is my son. He's like a son to me. Well, on set, we act like father and son. It's kind of funny. But like in real life, these plants are my children, 100%. And I treat them like it, I love them like it, I, 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 I it's kind of weird, I'll admit, but hey, like I said, you do you, like, it's, plants are, I don't know, they're just, just me and plants always seem to hit it off. Oh, <sighs> uh, next, oh, uh, I guess, actually, what, what is my favorite plant? I, I, you think, oh, I'm my favorite plant's a cactus. No, no, no. I hate cactuses. I think my actual favorite plant is actually a sunflower, but I typically don't have them. I just... 
I guess I like them so much that I just don't have them, because then it makes me think about them more, which makes me like them more, I guess. Not in a weird, creepy way, like, oh yeah, Garmin on sexually turned on by sunflowers. No, I just, they're a beautiful plant. I like the plant, and I think that they're just, they're intriguing. They're just, they're everything. I get a lot out of plants. Uh... Of course, when I was really young, my mom had a garden, and we grew them, but they died, and that kind of made me sad. But that's life. I mean, we're all, we all get, things die, we all get sad. That's life. Move on, I guess. You know, that's what I've always done. It doesn't really always work out. I had an uncle I was really close with once, and when he died, it, it rocked my world. He had a boat we used to go out on. Me and him had a lot of good memories. He was almost like a se second father to me. He was my 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 best friend almost. On a brighter note, I mean, I do have this one uncle who is still alive. He's really old. He's like 90 something. He's a great guy. Super funny. I wasn't nowhere near as close to the other uncle, but this guy, uh, Uncle Uncle Joe. Oh yeah. I know it's such an average name, Uncle Joe, but wait, oh my gosh, his last name, Uncle Joe Fancy Lusson, Fancy Lusson, I don't know what it means, I personally, I think it's some weird made up language, I have no idea, he doesn't have the last name of Garmadon for some reason, God knows why, anyhow, he was, a, he was an okay guy, okay, um, <clears throat> getting really nostalgic, Back to my youth. Like, back when I was a kid, things were just... Things were weird when I was a kid. Things are really weird now, but things were a lot different. You, you had to be tougher back then. I mean, you still gotta be tough now, but, like... It, it was hard. It was really hard to express yourself back then. And growing up as a kid, I, I always was the odd one out. I mean, me and Wu, uh, me and Wu didn't always get along sometimes. So, you know, I, uh... I was always, I wasn't, I don't know, I don't want, I don't want to say behaved at school, but I mean, I, I was always a pretty smart, I mean, I, I've, I've paid my dues, I went to college, oh man, high school year, junior and senior year, I took this class called music theory, I was in music theory one and two, and the next year, AP music theory, advanced placement to get college credit, I still remember a lot of the stuff I learned. I'm not really honestly sure why I took it. I mean, I like singing. I, I enjoy singing. But beyond that, I didn't... I mean, it was always in the back of my head. Oh, I could become a songwriter. I could compose music. But I... Or maybe, maybe I could teach music. But it wasn't something I was really, really heart set on, like, film or theater. It was really just something I did. And, and in my school, there really were no other classes I could take as an elective. So I kind of just, yeah, why not? I'll take music theory. And I learned quite a bit. My teacher, oh God, I don't remember his name. It's been years. He, he was kind of, he kind of went fast, too fast sometimes. Then the next day he'd have to go back and he realized, oh shit, None of my students actually understood what I was talking about, and then he'd have to go back and reteach it, and then it, it was it was interesting. It was interesting. I can still play the piano, I, I pretty well, honestly. Uh, forearms definitely really helps that. I was I was never really into any other instruments. When I was like in fifth and sixth grade, I was in band. I think I played the xylophone. Yeah, because you know forearms. I was great at that, and they tried to get me out of band. They didn't want me in band because I was taking up the place of other percussionists because I could do a boatload of stuff at once and I refused to quit so they forced me to leave and I kind of just never got back into band. It's kind of too bad but that's life. I mean really what are you gonna do? That just happens. It's the same with the film movies. You audition sometimes you don't get the role. You just have to move on. That's life. I mean heck you apply for a job and you don't get it. That's life. I've applied for plenty of jobs. Many auditions. I Sometimes I don't get them. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I get the role you don't want. That's just life. You move on. Keep doing what you like and maybe one day you'll strike it. I struck a deer. Tell us in the book right here. Perfect role. I, I have really enjoyed this. Oh man. I don't know what I'm going to do after this.
Okay, one more, one more topic. Um, the producer just handed me a note here. He says, talk about... Ugh. Wants me to talk about romance. Why the, why the fuck did you give me this? No. Fine. All right. So as you know, I, I, I Garmin, I had a wife. But she died. I cannot give much advice. I've always been a loner, as you know. But I want to talk about... Flip the paper over. My first date. Oh, I remember it so well. My first date. It was a fair day that day. The sky was blue. It was an uncomfortable 85 degrees. And we hadn't put the air conditioners in the house yet. So it was uncomfortable. Nonetheless. Ugh, I remember that day. I uh, This might be the reason why I never really got back into romance. It just was it was just not a good experience. She came over. Well, we, I had to bring her in my, in my car. It's interesting driving a car with four arms. You try it. Uh, so I brought her in. We're like, what do you want to do? I remember. And I was always on my first date, so I had no idea. And she was like, let's play a game. And I was like, a game? Okay. So we got our clue. And we played clue. First off... Rule of life. There's many rules of life you gotta learn here. This is the first one you need to learn right now. Never play Clue with two people. Never, never, never play Clue with two people. Just don't. Okay. Then, I, I, my dad has set up his old stereo system. Well, you know, the first one you to master my dad. Or whatever. And he... I was I played some of my old, my old record. My old David Bowie record. This is back in the day. This shit wasn't... You know, it wasn't really, this is, this is, wasn't like nowadays, this is like the real deal. You didn't have like an iPhone you could just pull up, and I was playing it. I don't think she liked it very much, which kind of offended me. I was like, man. And just a few days later, like a week after the date, she insulted David Bowie's hair. She was like, I don't like her hair. And it's like, what did you just say? You don't like his hair? Oh man, that was a relationship killer right there. Fine if you don't like his music. Fine if you don't like him, but if you don't like his hair, oh man, relationship killer. Anyways, then, oh man, we tried to watch a movie and it just did not work out. I do not recommend it. Just honestly, if you're getting into a relationship, don't bring up David Bowie, because it might just be a relationship killer. I, I personally think David Bowie was a relationship killer between me and this person. Literally, I am not joking. I I'm being perfectly honest here. Well, I think that about does it for today's episode. I mean, this is a bit longer of a podcast. We brought up a few new topics. Hopefully next time we can... Maybe I'll get some more some more stories down, you know. And they've started back up filming, so they kind of need me on set, like, now. So I've got to go. So, well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, and uh, hopefully you tune in for next week's episode. I want to say next week. It's probably not going to come out next week. But tune in for the next episode, and I'll, I'll see you soon.